What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV, back here for yet another Tottenham update where we're going to go into the last 24 hours of Tottenham news regarding transfers. And we're going to start off talking about Morgan Gibbs-White of Nottingham Forest as the footy insiders say that Tottenham and Newcastle have been told they'll have to pay more than £50 million if they want to sign Morgan Gibbs-White from Nottingham Forest this summer. Um, I mean, £50 million in terms of with Nottingham Forest with their financial problems does seem a bit steep. Um, I don't think it's steep for the kind of player he is. I think he probably is a £50 million player. I really rate him. Um, I think he's got high quality, versatile. Um, I'm a big fan of, of his, and he's physical as well. Doesn't get bullied. Obviously, Forrest got deducted four points for um, not being in the corners of uh, financial fair play. And I don't know what next year's accounts look for them. If they're desperate for money, they might have to take a lower fee. But if I'm Newcastle, I mean, I think if I go, I think 50 million is a good price if with the money they have. Yeah. If they can, if spend, they can it. spend it. If yeah. they can spend they're, it, but, but the rules are changing. Uh, yeah, I don't even know what, what the rules are changing to, but it all, it all seems very weird that the rules just change every six months just to suit uh, whatever they want to do. But in terms of Morgan Gibbs-White, do you see him having a place in our squad? In the squad, yeah. Um, obviously, it's a big outlay for a player who's not guaranteed to start, but with obviously more games coming next season... Um, I think someone like him could definitely be of use because he can play multiple positions. Uh, it depends on obviously who goes in the summer. Um, but I, I, I think he'd be a brilliant addition. I think he'd really fit in on what we do. But it's a big outlay for someone who, you know, is probably going to be back up to Madison. Mm. Um, but I guess like... <laughs> We, we spent that money, 50 million on um, Brennan Johnson, who wasn't coming in as an uh, automatic starter every week. We spent 65 million as well on Richarlison, who wasn't coming in as a out-and-out out st starter every week with Harry Kane and, and Hillman Son at the club. So I guess like when you're trying to make the squad as strong as maybe the starting 11, these are the moves you've got to make. I agree. I don't think we sign him, though, if it's 50 million. I think we only sign him if we can get a cheap deal. Mm. I think, well, I reckon if it's if they're going to be stubborn on a big price, I reckon we go for a different player. Yeah, I mean, there was another report saying, like, Daniel Levy is in contact with Nottingham Forest to see how low they're actually going to go. <laughs> uh, so it's just a classic another Daniel Levy one. And it feels like we only go uh, for these kind of Premier League teams uh, players if they're in financial problems, and they are. So translation, Levy's uh, smelling blood. And he's, going, and he's going for the kill. Basically. <laughs> that's what we're hearing right now. <laughs> Let's talk about Alexander Izak. Um, terrible source, The Sun, are saying that Newcastle are braced for bids from Arsenal and Tottenham potentially worth £100 million for Alexander Izak if the Math Pies need to raise funds uh, to allow them to refresh their squad within FFP rules. However, Alexander Izak has um, been speaking about this as well and he said, of course I want to be here at Newcastle in the future. I came here for the project. I absolutely love it here. I feel at home. I want to finish the season in a good way. I love playing here. So he's put cold waters on him leaving the club. Yeah, I guess it all depends on what the financial situation is at Newcastle going into uh, next season because there's a lot of rumours that they're going to have to sell someone. With the rules changing, I don't know if that's still the case um, come the summer, but if um, if we're going by the current rules, then apparently they do need a big sell. There's a lot of rumours about Bruno Guimarães potentially leaving. Um, obviously, Trippier was subject to a move at some point, but obviously he's not, not for that big money. And Isaac is one of their biggest assets, isn't he? What a brilliant striker he is, I think, when he's ever he's been on the pitch for Newcastle. He's been such an asset. What I like about him is not only is he great technically, really good on the ball, has a little bit of physicality about him as well, doesn't get bullied too often, really great at the ball at his feet, really good close control dribbler as well. We saw that yesterday with his goal against Everton, really great goal. So I think he would fit in perfectly at Spurs, but I also think this guy's probably worth 100 million. Yeah, I mean, he's absolutely top quality. And I feel I think um, the stat is that he's got the best goals to minutes uh, ratio in the Premier League as well for a striker, which is unbelievable with, mm. with the strikers that they have in the Premier League right now with Erling Haaland, Hillman Son. Um, yeah, Alexander Izak's a top player, but in terms of 100 million, in excess of 100 million, there's no chance Spurs go anywhere near that. They spent 70 on him, didn't they? They yeah. spent big, big, big money they signed him for, so... Uh, if, they, if they're going to sell him, I, I mean, depending of how desperate they are, I yeah, assume... That's all, that's I, all it will come down to. Let's say they uh, they have to sell him, but they don't have to sell him for, like, a loss. Like, if, if they, they, they can still demand 100 million, I think they, they're well within their right, maybe even more. Yeah. If they had no money troubles, you're looking at over 100 million for him. Yeah, if, if they had no money problems, they wouldn't sell at any cost, probably. 
Like he's such a good player. Mm. He's young. Um, you know, he's got such a bright future ahead of him. Why would they sell at all? Mm. I think that he would be like completely off the market. But we'll have to wait and see what does happen in the summer in terms of Newcastle's financial issues. Next up, this is one from the Footy Insider as well about Emerson Royale. And they say Tottenham may be forced to sell Emerson to raise funds of their own uh, for their own players that they want to bring in in the summer. But having said that, if you want to sell Emerson, you need to bring in another right back. So, um, how, first of all, how much do you think we can get for Emerson? And second of all, it's this whole uh, thing again, like, oh, we need to raise uh, sell players to raise funds to bring in players. Yeah, I don't think that's true. I don't think we do need to uh, sell to, to raise funds. I think how Spurs like to operate is if they can do that, uh, they will. But I don't think we have to. I think they just prefer to uh, in terms of leaving the transfer business within itself so that the any profits that the, the club is making um, can, can be used rather, uh, rather than uh, going for transfers. We know how Daniel Levy likes to operate. That hasn't really changed um, over the years. I don't know about being forced to sell Emerson. I just think we probably want to sell Emerson. Um, I know the players like him. Big, he's a big uh, character in the dressing room. Um, but he's just not perfect uh, for Ange Postacoglu. I think that's clear. He's just not great on the ball. And I think you need to be very uh, good technically on the ball to thrive in this system. I think you could do a job, but I don't know about being great. So we signed him for 22 million, I think it was, or 25 million euros. I don't think we get much more than that, to be honest. If we can get our money back, I think we should. Yeah, I like Emerson. I think he's a good player as well, and I think he can thrive in, in a different system. Um, maybe particularly like a flat back four system that play a natural right back um, that's not asked to attack too much. And I think he can thrive in those kind of systems. And I think um, you'll see teams around Europe, uh, maybe even in England, that will see the values of Emerson. And I think maybe we can make a slight profit on him, but not like nothing too crazy, maybe like 30 million at the absolute most. But if he is going to a team outside the Premier League, you're probably not even going to see that so maybe 25 million or something like that and if we do get a bit of that you probably got to sell because we need to bring in another right back that's going to suit the system that can actually challenge Pedro Porro for that role as well because as, as much as we all love Pedro um, we don't want him to play every single minute of every single game and get burnt out and uh, we don't want him to get too comfortable either so uh, we need some real competition for him and last but not least We've got some quotes from Hyung Min Son regarding Timo Werner. Uh, let's read through the quotes and we'll react to them. And he says, the way we approach the game, the wingers are very important, staying out wide and being in the right position. Timo and Brennan are doing a great job, both understanding each other. When he came to Tottenham talking about Timo, he says he was missing a little bit of confidence, but now you can see he's playing with confidence and more comfortable. He is missing a few chances, but that will come. He's doing a great job. And as I've always said, he's a golden boot winner in the Bundesliga and we expect he'll score and give assists more for the team because we have, a mass we have massive games ahead. I always want to make good friends and good teammates. But in football, there are no guarantees and the club will make a decision. But Timo would happily stay here and I can see that. As a player, I want to help him so he's a better, he's a better option than right now. That's, um, that's a teammate's job. We'll see uh, what's going to happen at the end of the season. I want him to stay. Um, so mm. big words from Sonny saying he wants Timo to stay. I said on the stream that we did earlier on, I'm starting to warm to Timo. Timo's starting to warm to me in terms of what he's offering us. Yes, he's missed quite a few chances. Yes, he's not the perfect player, but I like what he gives us. I like his mentality. I like how quickly he's fitted into the squad as well. And I do see him getting gradually better. And um, I think he's also one of the natural fits on the wing that um, that we do have in the squad. And I think with him and Timo, with him and Brennan on both wings, I think it does give us maybe a different aspect in the aspect that Ange wants us to have on that football pitch with both wingers just being really uh, tugged out to that touchline and providing us options on that area of the pitch. And I'm not, I don't have, a, I haven't made up my decision on Timo if I want him to stay just yet, but he is warming to me. Yeah, and I think the impact he's had in the dressing room is really positive. Obviously, he seems to get on with everyone. That's really important, as Ange said. You know, you don't want any bad eggs, and Timo seems very far from that. He seems to be a really good influence in the dressing room. What I would say about him is. Uh, him off the left is really adapting to the system quite well and I think he is doing a good job um, I think it's what two goals three assists uh, uh, since he's come into the team and that is uh, something that we were lacking obviously when um, he wasn't there we were ru running out of options on that kind of side and he's really come in and done a good job and I'm I'm not here bashing Timo saying he's rubbish and, and he's not a good player because I do think he's a good player and I do think he's done well in his loan spell I just question, and I think that, that a lot of Tottenham fans are right to question, whether he 
is the right player to take us to the next level or are we just signing him because he's a cheap deal and it's someone to kind of get away with rather than actually upgrading and I think that is a fair comment to make as much as I think Timo's done a good job yeah if we were to sign him I'm not against it as, as long as we're not ending our transfer activity on the wings on Timo Werner I don't think he is the guy if we're serious about change for a title that we can rely on to be our left winger uh, our number one left winger that is and be the main guy there I think he's a good player he clearly can do a good job and I think tactically as well he's a clever player he does re fundamentals really really well um, gets in good, pos good positions a lot he does whatever you want to say about Timo even when he's not playing well a lot of the time he is causing the opposition trouble and giving them something to think about and that leaves opens up spaces and that's something you can take advantage of but when it comes to that quality in the final third to be fair he's got two goals and three assists and it would be four assists if one that um, assist for a doggy counted so it could be six goal contributions you're talking about um, and that is not a bad return for the amount of game time he's had so that's pretty good but I don't know I'm still I'm still just up in the air at the moment uh, to be fair recently he's doing a lot better so maybe he's swinging towards maybe it's a smart decision to buy him but I'm still kind of uh, the jury's out for me at the moment yeah when you talk about him being an upgrade obviously when you're looking at the left wing options that we have Son Hill Solomon I think he is an upgrade on the latter two Solomon and Hill um, I would say that 100% but obviously he's nowhere near to the level of what Son can produce on that left wing in my opinion and I think um, even if Son isn't even like um, completely suited to a left wing role in Ange's system I still think he's better there than by far than what Timo can bring there so I completely agree with what you say about if we bring him in, we still have to bring in another one because you don't want Timo Werner as your starting left wing spot week in, week out. Um, and him being the best one there with if you want to play Son in the number nine. So bring in Timo, but that o only if you can push the boat out and, and, and make a big signing there on the left wing as well. But mm. to have Timo there and one other, I think that would be a really good option to have. And then that would probably spell the end for pl players like Hill and Solomon. Indeed. so that is your Tottenham update for today let me know in the comment section below your thoughts regarding all the news that we have spoken about today like subscribe and comment and as always come on you Spurs, Spurs.